Good. We're going to talk about weed control in general for switchgrass. But um, one of the most important aspects of weed control is actually mowing switchgrass. And you can see uh, Diane finished up here, mowed this entire spot here. It's all switchgrass. And we actually have switchgrass up that way. And then it's separated by a terrace right here. And then we have a terrace right here on the upper end that separates our food plots, our cornfield, everything that's by the house here. So we have a lot of switchgrass here. We're actually gonna put pollinator blend strip along here, pollinator blend strip here. So we have that switchgrass, pollinator blend, switchgrass combination. And that pollinator blend is for birds, butterflies, bees, pheasants, rabbits. And it's also good deer browse as it relates to summer, summer months. Now, we don't necessarily want a lot of deer bedding right here by our house, but we want the switchgrass for cover for us to get in and out of various spots in the woods. So it acts as a really good combination for building pheasant cover, pollinator blends. It's not solid switch. We have these terraces that are pretty wide in between. And of course the field edge woods line that we're promoting a little bit of regeneration and growth coming out from there that will occasionally mow let it regenerate. So it's almost like another strip of a type of pollinator blend or, or at least a diversity blend of regeneration that attracts uh, and provides a food value for both pheas pheasants, rabbits, and, uh, and deer as well. Um, but boy, the pheasant cover, the switchgrass is so critical. We have to have this solid switchgrass in this location. So installing switchgrass, so critical that you practice weed control. The death of all switchgrass is weeds or competition. They get shaded out. So in this location, I actually sprayed three times last year. We had the switchgrass drilled. Brandon from First Choice Food Plots came out here, drilled it in for us in this location. We have four different ways we planted switchgrass out here, including frost seeding, drilling, late planting in June, just thrown on top of the soil, and even throwing it into weed growth that had just been mowed the year before, and uh, no chemical maintenance. And we're gonna have to mow that one a lot this year. And so we've, practiced a real good regimen in most locations where you've either sprayed before drilled or sprayed uh, the previous year before we're frost seeding. As long as you get uh, that seed on the soil, we hit the, these areas with simazine before spring green up. Right after spring green up, you're still going to get appreciable weed growth. We hit it with a combination of two quarts per acre, one pint per acre of 2,4-D, two quarts per acre of glyphosate. We combine those right together in the same tank, spray, and then we let it go. The problem is, is that a lot of times there's switchgrass failures because someone didn't complete one of those steps. They didn't use the simazine before spring green up. They didn't spray the 2,4-D or um, glyphosate combination afterwards or even just glyphosate. One of those steps are missed. Uh, maybe it wasn't put on bare soil. Mowing cures a lot of these weed issues. So in a case like this, you see we have a lot of weeds come in, coming in, especially a lot of broadleafs, but we also have a lot of switchgrass uh, popping up. So what we've done is we've, the weeds are starting to get mixed in with the switchgrass and, and limiting the amount of switchgrass growth and the amount of sunlight. So by mowing this down to about six inches in this case, then we're allowing that switchgrass to actually be exposed to the sunlight. And with the, with the switchgrass getting its roots established last year, then we're going to have an explosion of growth and exponential growth of the switchgrass compared to the surrounding weeds. So this should be pure switchgrass by the end of the year. You know what, it, if it isn't by the end of the summer, then we can mow again. So we would look at four or five weeks from now, if we look at this and boy, the weeds are just taking over the switchgrass again, it's, it's coming in slow, that we're going to mow again so that we can get the sunlight down to the switch and allow it to grow. If you have locations where you've put switch in and you haven't practiced weed control, you have to get in there if you haven't practiced the proper steps. You can't just let the switchgrass go, it will die out. That's why you can't mix switchgrass with screening blends. John Comp has a great HD screening blend. You can't mix switchgrass with screening blend because if there's enough screening blend to actually offer a screen, then it's going to shade out the switch and kill it. And if the switch is viable and can actually grow within that screening blend, that means that the screening blend is so thin because it's not casting any shade on the switchgrass and it's able to grow that you don't actually have a screen. Trust me, I've learned that the hard way. By mowing down, you're setting back those weeds and even in locations where you throw the switchgrass, you practice little to no weed control. If you keep it mowed, you allow that switchgrass to, to grow and actually reach the sunlight, you're gonna experience some great growth. A lot of times you're mowing once towards July, end of July, that first year. The next year you can mow again in late May late June, early July, and then again in August if there's aggressive weed control or aggressive weed growth. 
but eventually the switch grass is going to win because it outpaces everything else in its growth. You just have to get the sunlight to it. So make sure once your switch grass is growing, once it's in the ground, if you have a lot of weeds, don't look at it as a failure. Just get out there and mow. We mowed, we have a mid PTO uh, mower deck on a small Kubota. Um, I have, I have uh, someone that I know, uh, David Bryce over in Michigan, he, he uses a zero turn. I had no other people that use zero turn mowers, but however you get it done, and you'll notice in here, we don't have a lot of clusters of weed debris and growth because we didn't mow when the weeds were two feet tall. We mowed when the weeds were about right here. And you can see we're mowing it down to the top of the switchgrass. So you can see the switchgrass coming in. We've mowed it down into that switchgrass. The switchgrass is now going to receive a lot of sunlight, ample sunlight. And so now all these switchgrass clusters we have in here, I wouldn't be surprised if they're six feet tall this year. They're gonna grow. We're going to bring it to you. Just make sure whatever you do, you practice proper weed control. Mowing can really salvage your switchgrass. Not that much different than if you have poor food plots, you can throw 200 pounds of winter rye per acre right on top of whatever your failed food plot is in the fall and enjoy a great food plot. You can do the same with switchgrass, but it takes some dedication and time and it's worth it because once you have the switchgrass established and you've practiced proper weed control, with mowing, it takes three to four years to fully get established if you're just mowing. With chemical control and mowing, you could be at 90% of your potential switchgrass growth by the end of year two. That's what I'd like for you, but either way, you can take care of it, you can mow it, get the weeds down to the top of the switch, and enjoy your switchgrass, your effort will be worth the reward because let's face it, switchgrass can actually live for decades to come, infrequent mowings. You don't even have to burn it. I don't even know if we'll ever burn this out here. It looks really cool on Instagram and social media to burn it, but if we can mow it and we can just come out here and mow it whenever we feel like it and get it down, get the weeds down and let it grow and come in pure and shade out all this weed growth, why bother burning it in any, in any way? Because we can just mow it, take care of it, have a viable switchgrass stand. Consider mowing, make sure you take care of your switchgrass, and boy, you'll be happy you did because it doesn't take long. This field will be seven, eight feet high. It'll be full of rabbits, pheasants. We have the pollinator blends for the birds, butterflies, and bees alongside. And we'll have that great wildlife combination where we're turning in this idle field right here that, was used, that used to be CRP, uh, went for, went out about two years ago, but it was CRP for 10 years. It really didn't offer much um, to the wildlife and, and no CRP really blend really does. So we're offering that great combination of switchgrass, pollinator blend, edge cover. And we like it too, because it's right near our house. You know, our, our house is just right up there. You can see the top and you can see where our corn was. We'll have food plots and corn up here, but we're setting the table for a lot of wildlife in just this location, switchgrass is a big part of that, let alone the rest of the farm that we have here. So enjoy the progression of what we're doing here. What we're doing here, I'm trying to do this so I can teach you guys out here how to make sure that you not only have great food plots, bedding areas, water holes, mock scrapes, stand locations, but great switchgrass as well. There's no reason to ever let it go. And if you just put a lot, little effort into it again, it'll be well worth the amount of work that you're putting into it and the rewards will be in beautiful cover this fall. I'm excited to tell you guys about my latest web class. It's how to plant food plots, how to design your food plot program. And it covers everything. And really there's 30 videos, over 10 hours, 11 hours of footage, workbook, hats, you know, all that stuff on top of it. I urge you to check out the link, but I cover five main areas, critical food plot concepts, where to plant, how to create, what to plant, and finally how to plant it takes you through that step by step so you can make your own decisions that apply to you and build a great high quality food plot program this year, whether you have decades of experience or no experience at all.